welcome back live to Folsom Field. This thing is made more amazing by the realization that just five years ago, CU finished their season 1-10. It's been a magical season to this point, encompassing a roller coaster of emotions. of coach Bill McCartney, their highest ranking since 1977. 2-0 here early in the year with wins over Texas and Colorado State. Coming up next, CBS Sports presents College Football. Buffalo is back on the roam in the great plains of college football. Colorado is emerging as a force in the Big 8 Conference. They have a high-powered offense led by tailback Eric Bieniemy and a Houdini-like sophomore quarterback, Darian Hagan. This, coupled with a relentless defense, has the Buffalo faithful thinking of the Orange Bowl for the first time since 1977. Roses are the main topic of conversation in Champaign, Illinois. The fight in the line eye haven't won in Pasadena in 25 years. But quarterback Jeff George may be the man to change that, especially after this last second winning touchdown pass against Southern California. So today, Big Ten battles Big Eight. It's Illinois and Colorado coming up on CBS. Colorado CBS Sports welcomes you to our season premiere of college football 1989. You could scan campuses all across our land and not find a more majestic setting for a university than right here at the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. Down below this breathtaking backdrop, today we'll witness a rugged showdown between 10th ranked Illinois and the 8th ranked Colorado Buffaloes. Bring in our sideline man again this year, John Dockery. here at Colorado. The Buffaloes are a very talented team with a real shot at the Big A championship, but they are without their senior quarterback and leader, Salinesi, his locker empty as he battles inoperable stomach cancer. Healthy six months ago, and Essie now sits in the stands in a private box, hoping that somehow chemotherapy will produce a miracle. His teammates are part of this battle also. They wear Sal embroidered on their sleeves and have dedicated the season to him, and each day after practice, they kneel and pray that Sal will be okay. But more than anything, this Colorado football team would like to give the gift of a Big 8 championship ring and a trip to the Orange Bowl to their ailing friend and teammate. Third and long. Hey, 
Reagan going long. Campbell is out there. He has it at the 35. And out of bounds at the 5. Jeff Campbell. He averaged over 30 yards a reception last year. He's a man who is known as being dangerous on a reverse. Hollyway play when Hagen was in the seventh grade. It was a Pop Warner game they both played in. Holloway was in the ninth grade. First and ten. Here's a pass from the enemy. MJ Nelson's down there. He'll score the touchdown for Colorado. Colorado team more or less going out for the toss. This is going to be an emotional group today. It's going to be hard to measure, like you said in the open, Dave, how the emotion will affect this CU team. There's been such an outpouring of affection towards the team and, and the family of Salinesi, everyone from President Reagan. Uh, last night in the team hotel, I ran into a couple of former Colorado State University players, now with the Seahawks, Kelly Stauffer and Harper LaBelle. They were coming by to give their best wishes and some flowers to Coach McCartney and the team. And uh, this is just going to be a powerful, emotional, especially at the start, football game. No doubt about it. I think the entire state of Colorado and more than that, the nation has been touched by what's happened in Boulder this past week. And again, I don't think you'll be able to gauge as to how this team will respond until well into the second quarter. Uh, looked a little bit lethargic during the course of the week. The practice was not as good as you would have liked. Bill McCartney, of course, assumed that it might not be. But I think once the game starts, at least we hope that this team will come out and play the way that Salonesi would have hoped they would play. Colorado, be good football. Dave, Colorado won the toss. They'll receive. And here comes a moment of silence. For number eight, Sal and Essie. In memory of two college football standouts that passed away in the last week. The University of Washington was set by the loss of Chuck Long, captain of the 1936 Husky squad that played in the 1937 Bowl for the University of Pittsburgh. And all of the college football was burning the loss of Colorado quarterback, Sal and Essie, who passed away last Saturday. Messi was the local starting quarterback in 1988 and led the team to a great and it's only in one season since 1976. Thank you. Conklin, the quarterback. Compton is 36. Lewis is 20. That is Lewis in motion. Conklin, the throw on first down. He's got time. The Buffs are on the move. Big hole for the enemy. Eric breaks a tackle. On a race to the corner. Touchdown. The enemy up and over. Touchdown. With a very good field goal kicker where they could get three points. And it would be big because of what's happened in that last drive by CU. Conklin. And it's intercepted by Bruce Young. And Lewis running 20 seconds and counting. Third and goal. Flanagan touchdown. Touchdown. Not in college football. I think in pro football, you beat him as fast as you can. Here's the reverse to Campbell. Jeff's got some room down the sidelines. He's only got one man with a possible angle. Touchdown.
Sports presents College Football. Nebraska football is 100 years old. In its glorious past, we've witnessed legendary coaches, national championships, and Heisman Trophy winners. It's a tradition of winning that only continues through the generations. Nebraska football is also unstoppable tailbacks, elusive quarterbacks. The Cornhuskers are uncompromising, and they are out to commemorate their centennial in style with a third national championship. Colorado shares the same anniversary, but not the same supreme history. Yes, Byron Wizard White once led them to a perfect season, but now they are pointing at number one for the first time ever at Colorado. The Buffaloes have been through an emotional season. They are focused and explosive, and they have leaped into the national spotlight with an undefeated season. Today, a berth in the Orange Bowl is on the line. It's the Big Eight Battle of the Year. Nebraska and Colorado coming up next. CFA Saturday, we bring you 25 miles due northwest of Denver to Boulder. Set against the Rocky Mountain Range, this rugged landscape is home to the University of Colorado. It's where the deer and Colorado buffaloes roam. It truly is a Rocky Mountain high, over a mile above sea level. And today there is something special in this rarefied air. It's a football showdown. Third ranked Nebraska about to collide with second ranked Colorado. And we welcome you live to the color of college football. The fans dressed in black and gold for Colorado and red for Nebraska. But at stake today, it's 100% pure orange. And good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jim Nance, and welcome to Folsom Field. You know, quite simply, there has never been a bigger football game in Colorado's 100-year history than this game today. You see, the Buffaloes and Huskers are tied for the lead in the Big Eight. They each are 8-0 on the season, ranked second and third in the country. The winner today will go to the Orange Bowl and probably play Notre Dame for the national championship. You know, here at Colorado, they refer to this as the red letter game. Everywhere you go, constant reminders that neighboring Nebraska is their biggest rival. However, in recent years, it's been a one-sided rivalry. Nebraska has won 20 of the last 21 years. But Pat Hayden, there are over 50,000 fans today who believe that that one-sided domination to the is right. about to end. And the audible by Hagen. He sets Parrott to the tight end, back on the right side. Play action. Hagen throwing, and it's intercepted. Yes, it's intercepted by the Cornhuskers, Tyrone Bird. Carpenter, the lone setback behind Jerry Godowski, the quarterback. Looking pass, setting up a screen. They go to Carpenter. He gets away from Salavia and cuts back to the middle. He's got room inside the 40. Inside the 30, he's going to score. Nebraska on the first play of the day for Nebraska. 51 yards. Running the option on first down. Hagen has it. He has room. He's got one man to beat. Now he pitches to Flanagan, and he may take it all the way. Flanagan's in for the touchdown. Running right with Clark, no gain. Tackled by Alfred. As does Arthur Walker on that defensive line. Second and ten. Clark is going to be dropped by Williams for a loss. Five-yard loss, so it's third and 15. Nate Turner comes in as a receiver. Godowski hands off inside at the time. The return man, Campbell, leads the Big Eight in punt returns. Short boot coming to midfield. Campbell will run right. Gets away from the wave. He's got room. Inside the 30. Out of bounds. Inside of the 5. The punter pushed him. First and goal from the 4. 
out of the power eye, running the option and going with Flanagan on the pitch. He is hunted down by Tyrone Bird. Second for a goal from the six. Hemingway in at fullback. Hagan will keep off right tackle. Gets to the one yard line. Short yardage and goal line. Low man wins. Running the option. Hagan will keep. And he'll go in untouched. Goal from the 12 for the Cornhuskers. Godowski. For Gregory, touchdown Nebraska. He has kicked them 60 yards in practice. Hagan. No, he's not down. <laughs> Here he goes, Hagan. Wow. And he gets him in field goal range. He's <laughs> short of the first down. It was a gain of officially it's 49 yards. His career long is 52. His long of 89 is 47 yards. Culbertson has the distance. Has the Tough position for uh, Jerry Godowski. Oregon Gregory to the left. Washington's the tight end tucked on the right side. Ooh, wow. An immediate give to the fullback and nowhere to go is Joel Steed and that whole line of Colorado. Square to honor Salonesi. And the kick by Stiggy comes to Campbell at the 26. He has an opening. Here he goes, Jeff Campbell. He may break it. He is run down by Richard Bell. He saw Jamel first play in a Pop Warner game in the seventh grade. And Hagen running the option right this time. Keeping it and getting to the 10-yard Derek, the enemy. The enemy putting the helmet on, yeah. Pat. He is a guy that's run the sweep this year with great ability. He's a guy, too, that Bill McCartney tells us inside the 10, he is so focused on finding that end zone. They've never had a great competitor, as good a competitor, inside the 10-yard line as the enemy. And he can also throw. He's thrown for a touchdown this year against Illinois. Running the option, the enemy. He's going to throw. And the pass flagged down. I believe it's intercepted. Tyrone Leggett has been enemy through. You know, I've always wondered about a guy rolling to his left and throwing with the right hand, Jim. But they brought him in for that one particular play. He threw a big pass early in the year going to his left. Now, the flag is an offensive interference. Leggett came down with the football. Defensive pass interference. Wow. Rolling to his left. Pritchard, number nine, is the intended receiver early. And then behind him is MJ Nelson, but he did push on him. Leggett, number three, pushed off. Take away the interception. First and goal from the two. Flanagan hit at the knees by Kent Wells. We've got another shot of that controversial play, Pat. Take a look. And again, it's Leggett, number three, who's going to come into the picture on the underthrown deep ball. Again, Jim, I thought he, on live action, I thought he pushed before he went up. Richard kissing Flanagan in the full house backfield. Richard in motion. Running the option. The late pitch to Flanagan. Looking for the corner. He has it. Touchdown, Colorado. Will the Cornhuskers. Godowski gets away from the first wave. Looking at the end zone. Man open. It's Chris Garrett. Touchdown. Play a key Nebraska. part in this defense for Nebraska. Third and 11. Hagan running left. And into the open. Inside of the 20. And out of bounds at the 19, a gain of 17. Pritchard gave him a big block, and then he didn't know what to do. And to the inside. On first and 10, it's Hagan again. He may get his touchdown here. No, he stopped at the three-yard line. 
A gain of 17, 21 carries. This could be a series Colorado regrets. First and goal from the two, a chance to go up two scores. They settle for the field goal. It hooks through there, it's good. And it's 27, 21. Buffaloes, less than nine minutes to go. Bell again, incomplete. It actually, had he caught it and been stopped right there in the middle of the field, Nebraska may not even got another playoff anyway. Yeah, with 19 seconds remaining, they have to throw the ball way downfield. They can't just afford to try to get it in the first down. This can't be a 10-yard pattern. It has to be a deep pattern. Third down and 52 yards to victory. for Kretzenstein. He was open. But that route's not going to do it for you, Jim. He was open enough where he might have been able to catch it and get out of bounds around the 40, but still, you're right. Well, this... They've got to go down now. Fourth down and only 14 seconds remaining. John Bostic has been the big play receiver for Nebraska all year. Colorado get ready to call for reservations to Miami. Morgan Gregory. And he's tackled at the 42-yard line. They'll have to measure for a first down. They'll stop the clock. Patton is right at the first down yardage. Boy, and what a big break there for Nebraska, which means they'll get one more shot. And now they can actually throw the ball into the end zone. Mitchell's timeout to going to measure. This will be close. If he's short, the game is over. Gdowski needs to have his team on the line of scrimmage, really, Jim, because they'll start the clock again. They'll put the ball back in the play, the clock back in the play. Yeah, so he's got to be up at the line of scrimmage. First down, Nebraska. He's telling them, get to the line. We're going to put the clock into motion. They've got Bostick and Turner set to the left. One last play to decide the big eight. He's past the line he of scrimmage. Away. He's past the line of scrimmage, and it's incomplete anyway. Tell us oh yeah, it's it's the biggest, it's as sweet as it gets, and I couldn't be prouder of our players and coaches. We work real hard to get where we are, and we want to be humble in victory, but we want to enjoy it. The Darian Hagen, the Hagen was sensational. Hagen, Hagen should win the Heisman Trophy. Special teams spectacular too, coach. Special teams were were outside out sight. Congratulations, back to you. Okay, guys. All right. He's to get in position to play for a national championship. It took about 10 seconds for the goalpost to come down today in Boulder. They've won it for Sal. They've won it for themselves. Colorado is now 9-0 on the season. This team driven by the courage and memory of their deceased spiritual leader, Salinesi, who only hours before he passed away on September 23rd, wrote these words to his teammates.
don't be saddened that you no longer see me in the flesh because I will always be with you in spirit. Hold me dear to your hearts. As you know, I do all of you. I love you all. Go get them and bring home the Orange Bowl. It was signed, Love Sal.